Hi, Hope. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're continuing our study in 1 Thessalonians. And uh, the last question that I had asked coming out of our previous study was, how can Paul be so confident that the Thessalonians are chosen by God? Uh, he's, he's pretty confident. He says, um, for we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you. And that's verse 4. So how can Paul be so confident? And then second question would be, how can we be confident that we've been chosen by God? Um, and, and so we're just going to go through the next segment and kind of take a couple observations as we go. So starting in verse 5, because our gospel came to you not in, only in word, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake. And the first observation that we should make is that Paul's confidence in the Thessalonians' salvation, the fact that they've been chosen by God, is not so much confidence in the Thessalonians, like, oh, you're, you're such a great people, I know that you're saved. It's, it's a confidence in the power of the Holy Spirit. When Paul came, he was confident that the Holy Spirit could revive hearts, that the Holy Spirit could change people's desires and, and, and shift them over towards belief in God. And that has to be the starting point because the Bible teaches that we are dead in our sins. So we can't actually do something in order to make ourselves chosen. It has to be the work of God. But Paul was confident that the Holy Spirit was at work when he spoke to the Thessalonians. Because of Paul's confidence in the Holy Spirit's power to revive, the power to bring people to life and belief in the gospel, Paul then can be confident that the Thessalonians have been chosen. So let's seek some of the evidence of that as we keep moving forward. Verse 6, You became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. So when they received the gospel message that Paul preached, back when he originally brought it to Thessalonica, they, they accepted it. In fact, they accepted it with joy. And he could tell as he looked at that, that that was joy that came from the Holy Spirit. So Paul saw the work of the Holy Spirit. And because he was confident in what the Holy Spirit could do, as he saw that work in the Thessalonians, that they were receiving the gospel message, he became confident that God had chosen them to believe, that God had chosen them to be his people. But then... It continues in verse 7, You became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere so that we need not say anything. So Paul originally said that they imitated him. When they received the gospel, they imitated him. And here's a, a very real way that they did that. Paul was motivated and driven by the gospel to share the gospel with the people around them. And so were the Thessalonians. As they heard this message that, that Jesus had died and risen from the dead, and the reason he had died was for their sins and to conquer evil and to conquer Satan, the adversary who tricks people into worshiping other gods and who promises hope of, of life and a good time in this world, but in the end tricks us into a place where we die and receive the wrath of God for our rebellion against him, that Jesus rescues us from Satan and his deception, that Jesus pays for the wrath of God, it falls on him instead of on us. As they heard this message, not only did they receive that with joy, but then they extended that message again to the people around them. That became a new priority for them. Their, their lives changed as a result of the gospel coming into it. And so their faith was able to be seen in their actions. And the people around them would talk about the faith that they could see in the actions of the Thessalonians. And that gave Paul confidence that the Holy Spirit had indeed revived their hearts and that God had chosen them. In verse 9, those people, and this is, this is really fun, I think. In verse 9, for they themselves, he's talking about the people of Achaia and Macedonia, not the Thessalonians. They themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you. Okay? So Paul's hearing third-party reports about how the Thessalonians believed the gospel. Paul's hearing from these different people in Macedonia and these different people in Achaia. It's like the story of when he went to Thessalonica and preached the gospel, and then the Thessalonians believed it. Other people are telling him that story because the Thessalonians are sharing their story. The Thessalonians are talking about what happened when they heard the gospel. They're talking about what happened when Paul came and showed them how they could turn away from idols and towards the living God. And they're sharing their story and their testimony. And again, Paul is encouraged. He says, I see that God has chosen you, that the Holy Spirit has revived your hearts because you 
are sharing that story with the people around you. That, that, that's something you want to talk about. That's something that you want other people to know. And then here's the crux of it all. You turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. Paul's confident because they're talking about Jesus and they're talking about the gospel. And their lives have been reoriented and shifted around this, this reality of they are now living for the true God. They're no longer living for idols. They're living for God. They're waiting for Jesus to return. Like They're no longer waiting for um, all the different um, things that they, they cared about before. Like That's not the thing that their life is all about. They're now in this place where they are looking forward to and waiting for the moment when Jesus returns. They're trusting in Him to rescue them from the wrath to come. Whatever judgment heads their way, whatever judgment they deserve because of their failures and because of the way they let down God or because of the idol, idolatry that was in their past or maybe idolatry that even still they're fighting off, whatever it is, they're trusting that Jesus will deliver them from the wrath to come. And because this belief is at the heart of what, they, um, what they're doing and how they're living, because this belief is at the heart of their faith and their response to the gospel, Paul is confident that they are chosen. So for us, as we think about whether or not we are chosen, I would encourage us to spend less time looking inwardly at our hearts, right? Like, like trying to do like this inward like processing of like, how do I know whether or not I believe this enough or are my emotions correct? Am I going to be able to prove to myself and my, my heart that I, that I really do love God enough? Don't do that. Paul is confident because of the external realities that faith created in the Thessalonians' life. That's where Paul's confidence comes from. In 1 John, John encourages the believers there, look at, look at the way your faith has lived itself out and how you behave now and encourage yourself. You can't do that on your own. That's the power of the Holy Spirit in you. So I'd encourage us to pursue Jesus. Instead of asking the question, am I chosen and, and dwelling over that, rejoice with Paul that you've been chosen. And pursue Jesus. Believe in Jesus. Share his story with the people around you. Let him change and be Lord of your life. Submit to that. Rejoice in that. And the more you do that, the more you create a thankfulness in your heart and a confidence in your heart that he has chosen you. I hope this is encouraging to you, Hope. I look forward to worshiping with you this weekend. Go in peace.